This is a ship. A ship, a ship, another ship, and ooh, a boat. And lastly, another ship. The usage of ships for exploration has smalled the world as we see it right now. Ferdinand Magellan arrived in the Philippines in 1521 with ships. Christopher Columbus also used ships. And Gordon Ramsay also a ship. But when this happened on the 28th of June 1914, which prompted a four year war between Germany, Austria, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire against the Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan, and the United States, ships were now used not only to explore but for military purposes. To which begs the question how do you protect this monstrosity of a thing during a war? And this bloke popped out and said, Boy, maranong kwento. Ayan! And they painted almost every ship to this. And the surprising thing is, it sort of worked. Now, before we start colorizing things, we got to understand first what the hell is this and who is he? He is Norman Wilkinson. During the First World War, he served in the British Royal Navy at Dardanelles patrolling over the Mediterranean on a submarine. But as a child, he had a little training in art, and he continued to practice drawings and paintings before he served in the Royal Navy. And during his time as a sailor, he knew that one of the greatest threats that he faced were these. These are the German U-boats. Submarines that were effective during the First World War. According to Wire.com, the Germans used the U-boats to sink 5,000 ships during the war, just because they were very quiet and hard to find. Which gave our hero an idea. Ayan! These were called the Dazzle Camouflage. The idea was if they can't win the war, they can at least win the most fabulous ship award. Char. The idea was simple. To dazzle the U-boats, essentially tricking them in the middle of a war. Here's how it worked. In order for U-boats to take down an enemy ship, they have four essential things to take note of. The ship's distance, direction, angle, and speed. But of course, if we are at war, we won't see things on the top view. Instead, we would see it like this. Imagine yourself in a German U-boat and you spotted one of these with your periscope. With the bizarre design, lines, and shapes painted on the ship, it makes it hard for us to gauge how far is it, the direction and angle of which it is going, and the speed of the enemy ship. And in theory, that's how the bizarre camouflage worked. It was meant to dazzle and confuse the enemy for it being too fabulous. But without the razzle dazzle on the ship, it'll be easier for us to understand and note of those four things. Now, the research for the color schemes of these were pretty much easy to find. According to this illustration made by the man himself, Norman Wilkinson in 1917, the color schemes range from these set of colors. And all of these were not just a concoction of colors of which he liked. Instead, he assembled his own team of artists and modelers to aid him with such endeavor. With it, his department was called the Ministry of Shipping Transport Department. And since we are done with the proper assessment and research, it's now time for color. color, color.
Now, having all these colorized, it sort of poses a new problem. It doesn't look like it's working at all. Which is a valid question to ask since there was no conclusive study to back up its effectivity. Based on drawings, plans, and illustrations, it could look like it's working. But again, the real world is different. Different from what we see or how we plan it to be. But still, what happened to the dazzle camouflage? Why don't we see any military ships or naval vessels with such designs? Well, in 1904, Christian Holzmeyer popped out and said, Boy, meron akong kwento. Meron nga akong kwento eh. Well, what he had in mind was the telomobiloscope that was used to detect ships with radio frequencies. It wasn't until the 1930s when the radar or radio detection and ranging was used. And with radar in the Second World War, the razzle-dazzle of ships were now essentially useless just because of a device that went However, it wasn't the end for the legacy of our boy, Norman Wilkinson. Today, car manufacturers use the dazzle camouflage to show off a new car while hiding the important stuff such as lines, aero design, crevices, and such. To come up with an idea to protect this monstrosity of a thing was already a conundrum in the first place. Although, all these plans, designs, and colorful play between colors on these ships is a reminder of one simple thing. That despite how big the problem is, maybe the most bizarre yet simplest solution out there is the best solution after all. Hi, this is Romeo Limasker and thank you for watching Colored History. If you learned a thing or two from this episode, please give this video a thumbs up and if you wish to see more, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon to get notifications for new videos weekly. If you wish to see the ships on color, view them on my Instagram page at romeo.lima.oscar.